we're on the way to Scotland. Um, the weather is predictably lovely. Uh, we're actually going to stop for breakfast at the Cambridge service station, so um, power is not going to be an issue getting to Leeds. Not that it would be anyway. We left with 2% estimated when we get to Leeds, and now it's saying 10%. This energy app, which Tesla have got now, is brilliant, by the way. Very, very good. Because um, it takes account of the... Uh, topography of the land. I guess it probably takes account of temperature as well, but I don't know for sure. Can't take account of wind direction, of course, which I think is probably where part of our gain in, in power has come from, because the wind is in a slightly favourable direction. Always handy. Anyway, to the Ecotricity charge point at the Cambridge service station for much needed coffee as opposed to power. Right, well we stopped for coffee, um, which was nice. Uh, it's amazing how long it takes at service stations. We were there for 22 minutes, so that's put in about 10% or so extra power. And it now says we're gonna to get to Leeds with 22%, so that's made, you know, the amount of power we have when we get there is just a complete non-issue now. Um, it was good that we stopped actually because my uh, my son in the back, Jasper, he's uh, actually feeling a little under the weather today so I think he fancied a, a break and a bit of a cuddle before continue on, continuing on up north. Um, yeah, so nothing really to report much other than, you know, the weather is not looking fantastic and it looks like the uh, Ecotricity quick charges have all had some sort of a firmware upgrade because the screen has got a, a sort of a different slightly clearer sort of menu option which uh, I, I think probably is a good thing maybe hopefully that will make them a little bit more reliable because the big problem with these uh, ecotricity charge points is by and large they're not very reliable at all uh, which kind of limits their useful usefulness the amazing thing though is it's just so easy with a tester to do long journeys. So much easier than with a, a smaller a smaller battery electric car like the Nissan Leaf, where you really rely on the quick chargers working, whereas with a with a Tesla all you've really got to do is make sure you charge before you need to. And that way if the charger isn't working you can just stop at the next one. Which okay that does put you out a little bit, lengthens your journey if that happens to you, but generally it won't happen to you, especially if you check on the on the web to make sure that the charges are working before you decide to stop there. Luckily all the ones we need between here and Scotland are, are working fine. Uh, so uh, that's it really. I'll uh, probably do another short clip when we get to the supercharger in Leeds. I've never been there before. That's the nice thing about superchargers is compared to the ecotricity points, they are relatively reliable. Uh, I've never, I've certainly never been to a supercharger yet and had it not work. And touch wood, that won't happen. So uh, yeah, so superchargers are perhaps the only quick charger that I actually would rely on to work rely on to work. Whereas I never I always sort of try and assume the ecotricity ones aren't going to be working until I actually turn up and find that they are. Also I find it quite it's quite nice where they don't ask for the card. It makes the whole getting charging and stopping charging process be a lot quicker and smoother. I think ecotricity set them up that way when they have uh, signal issues in a certain area because that's one of the reasons why they go down because the, the SIM cards in the quick chargers can't, can't talk to the servers in the sky and that leads to not being able to start your charge session which is a you know, ridiculous reason for finding yourself stranded at the side of the road or oh, the, the charger didn't have mobile signal. You know, I think that's the strength of the Tesla system is it just doesn't have those sorts of reliability issues because Tesla insists that any cars that use their points are all sort of prepaid in advance, included in the price of the car. Admittedly, at the moment, the only cars that can use them are Teslas, but one day, 
when bigger battery cars arrive from other manufacturers, we may well find that there are other cars that's, that decide to use that, those supercharger networks. I would certainly recommend other manufacturers do look at doing that because you know, having a big battery electric car is all well and good, but if you don't have use of a good fast charge network that's positioned out of cities, then you know, you're still limited to a fairly small range compared to a petrol or diesel car that you can just drive you know, around the world if you want. And you know, certainly, I think that's, that's always been the sort of the real difference for me, the, you know, the thing that's, that really makes electric cars a viable alternative to petrol and diesel is, is a sensible range and, and a good quick charge infrastructure. For example, there's, a, there's an Audi R8 e-tron that's just announced that it's apparently going to have a 92.5 kilowatt hour battery, which is actually slightly bigger than the um, top Tesla battery is 85 kilowatt hours. So that should give it a good 280 miles of range probably, which is fantastic. Yeah. But I'd never buy one of those cars if I wanted to go touring anywhere because I'd be stuck at motorway service stations for probably an hour and a half to get a, a charge up to sort of 80%, which is too long really, in my opinion. Well, we've made it to the uh, lead supercharger. We're just going to be here for 15, 20 minutes and then we'll be heading over to a friend's house in Huddersfield for a couple of nights before continuing on up to the Highlands of Scotland. I think we might get some lunch as well because we're all a bit hungry. Where is he? Got to say, I do love a good supercharger. Always working. Usually there's a free space as well because there's always at least two stalls. Very well designed system. Works extremely well. Currently charging only 64 kilowatts. Presumably that's because there is a another car parked over there. You can see that and they're charging as well. Looks like a nice hotel. Well, that's the back of the hotel. That bit doesn't look quite as nice, but yeah, all in all, so far very good. Oh, and they've got a Starbucks, so I might have to get a sneaky extra coffee. Because uh, I have a bit of a thing for coffee. I've been plugged in for about five minutes so far. It's already put in seven kilowatt hours. At home, that would take me two hours to charge up that much. It's just incredible. You know, it just the speed that these chargers throw the power in by the time I've gone to Starbucks and got a coffee and come back the car's going to be ready to go well we've made it to Scotland <laughs> as you can see it's quite snowy to say the least oh it's good fun though we wound up driving, uh, we only stayed one night in, uh, oh, some deer. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Apparently all this snow fell just, fell just last night, which I should know about, because we actually decided to uh, only stay one night in Leeds. We drove to the night in the end, so we had an extra day of uh, holiday in Scotland, and uh, it was snowing quite heavily. So I can now confirm that uh, the rear wheel drive Tesla is more than capable of driving in light snowy conditions. Um, I wouldn't necessarily want to take it up a, you know, steep, snow-packed um, road, but luckily this is still the UK, so it's, it's not, uh, not that extreme. Although that is a lot of snow. I don't know if you can see that. It's a big, big pile of snow by the side of where the cars are parking. Um, oh, I also had some fun at the Ecotricity charge point near, uh, um, where was it? Uh, there's one north of Scotch Corner on the A1M. That wasn't much fun. It was, uh, how do I put this? Not working. Yeah, said it was working, wasn't working. So unfortunately, we had to jump back in the car 
with a hungry child that just wanted uh, dinner and drive 15 miles to the next one, which was working. And that's where the sort of, you know, my single biggest piece of advice I would say to anyone with a Tesla is if you need a charge, make sure, or if you're going to need a charge for your journey, make sure you get it before you need to. Because the real benefit of a Tesla is that if you charge before you need to, you can, and it's not working, you just go to the next one. And almost all the motorway service stations have one, so you won't get caught short. Whereas uh, if you leave it to the last, you know, you're down to your last five miles, well, we'd have been in trouble then, wouldn't we? Because the charger wasn't working and the next one was 15 miles away. So, yeah, that's definitely a good piece of advice, I think, for anyone touring around the place. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so yesterday in the uh, <clears throat> late afternoon, evening and into the night, we did a total of 370 miles. We charged at uh, Morley in Leeds um, just to sort of get the car up to uh, full power. And then we went on from there up the A1M and we stopped just before we got to Newcastle twice, once when the charger wasn't working, once when it was. And that was just a sort of half an hour would have been fine. And then we drove on to Edinburgh. We got to Edinburgh with 17% battery remaining. Charged up there for, took 50 minutes. The supercharger was going extremely quickly. Had 115 kilowatts going into the battery for the first sort of decent length of time came back sort of 45 50 minutes later the car was 90 percent fully charged ready to go and then we did the 125 miles up into the west highlands of scotland which i have to say i is absolutely gorgeous beautiful place especially when the, you know everything's covered in snow On the, uh, on the way back, we're going to try and do the whole thing in one day, I think, and um, I'm thinking what I'm probably going to do is just put my 18-month-old to bed in the uh, back of the car and just drive through the night, because I think that'll be easier, and that way we can get the sort of 550-odd miles it'll take to get home all done and dusted in, in one sitting, rather than having to spend a night somewhere, which, you know, just some nondescript travel lodge wouldn't be the most fun place to spend the night, really. hopefully try and make some videos but it's turning out to be quite difficult to make videos because when my son is asleep in the uh, back of the car making a video disturbs him <laughs> so um yeah well I'll make them I'll make them when I can right since I've had the last uh, made the last video we've had some uh, fun and games um we at Fort William we used a uh, charge your car uh electromotive charge post worked brilliantly no problems there whatsoever uh, then after a few days there sort of seeing the local sites going to Glen Cohen and such like we um, drove to uh, Canusi I think that's how you pronounce it in the Cairngorms um, lovely little village one small problem and the reason we chose that particular um, village was because they had uh, another charge your car 22 kilowatt post but this one was not working uh, so I plugged the car up and the car just said waiting for a charge and the post said waiting for a car and I rang charge your car and they couldn't really help so <clears throat> um, I used the backup plan which was to ask the B&B &B owners that we were staying at very nice couple um, if I could borrow one of their three pin sockets overnight which is not ideal, it doesn't charge the car very quickly, but it does put power into it, and um, and that sort of has got us out of a tight spot with that one. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the nice thing about having a Tesla, I suppose, is you do have the ability to get yourself out of trouble. I mean, I still, when I got to Canusi, I still had 50% or so battery, so I could have driven back out to... Fort William or there's a little town called Pitlock Creek where we actually went for dinner as it turns out and they did um, have a working charge your car post uh, although it didn't do a full 32 amp three phase it only did 20 amp um, three phase which is about 14 kilowatts 
still, you know, but over over dinner time, that that put in at least enough power to cover the 90 mile round trip to Pitlockery from uh, Canusi. And uh, today we've just been up the Cangorn Mountain, which is good fun. Very windy, no skiing going on, unfortunately. Um, and now we're just uh, entertaining our little one at the fun house at the local uh, uh, the local Hilton. And he's having a whale of a time in there at the moment. But it really shows you the sort of you know the limitation of the charging infrastructure. It's not so much the availability of the infrastructure; it's that, generally speaking, when you really need it. It's very difficult to rely on it, which is why the key principle here is to always make sure you charge before you have to, so that you've got some options. If we pulled into Canusi on like 5-10% battery remaining, then we would have been stuck. We would have needed to find a 3-pin socket we could use, um, or there would be nothing else for, you know, no, no way to, to leave, basically. It's sort of... 15 miles for the next to the next nearest town that didn't have a charge point, and the nearest charge point was 45 miles away. So, you know, kind of knows what happens if you come up here in a Nissan Leaf or a Renault Zoe, and and the charge point's not working. Ooh, shudder to think. Um, and you know, and, and this is the this is the problem with there not really being a viable. Uh, in you know financial model that supports electric car charging because um, you could say well you know the company would have an incentive to keep them working if they um, charge more money or they charge something and actually both these ones were free and the parking was free too but the reality is they make so little money I mean, the, the one in Pilotcree is quite heavily used as in once a day so, you know, they're going to make a few quid a day. It's never going to add up to the cost of installing and, maintain and maintaining the, the charge point. The only way to do it is for some third party, they get something else out of it. Like the government, they get something from it. They get to say, look, we're supporting EVs and um, helps to reduce CO2 emissions. And it also helps to drive forwards the industry at the beginning stages. And the other thing is um, uh, you've got the... Uh, you know, people like Nissan and Tesla, for them, the point of installing quick charges is to enable people to buy their cars in the first place. And they're, they're the people that really have the financial incentive to install and maintain chargers. Um, clearly, Tesla understand that very well. I think Nissan actually probably do as well to some extent. I, I think they pretty much donated all of the quick chargers that Ecotricity uh, have installed around the country. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know for sure, but that's what I sort of heard on the grapevine was that they basically were, you know, a gift from Nissan saying, here you go, install these please. You have to pay for installation and electricity and, and you can have a free charger. Um, uh, and, you know, obviously that has worked very well for Nissan. I think that the increase in Nissan Leaf sales in this country are in large part because people see at the motorway stations that, you know, it is possible to do a longer journey when you need to. Um, and that's the thing about an electric car, you know, it's still a car, and the point of a car is, it's all well and good saying, well, I do most of my miles around town, fine, so do most people. But the reality is, almost everyone needs to be able to drive further when they need to drive further. And, you know, a car has to enable that, and not enable it via, I save so much money, therefore I can rent another car. That's not why you bought a car, so that you could rent a car when you need one. I mean, it's just completely circular logic there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, there's just some a few thoughts on the on the current shortcomings um, of the charging infrastructure. I mean, f fundamentally, it's it's definitely getting a lot better. Uh, it's just a question of time and <coughs> and you know the and the hardware really. I mean, I'm sure the hardware doesn't have to be as unreliable as it is, but at the moment, it really is very unreliable. And and the um, SIM card link to uh, you know the servers in the sky from the charge posts seems to be often the weak link with these things. So uh, yeah, hopefully they will come up with a better solution, like you know preloading all of the RFID card numbers into every post. I mean, I don't see why they can't do that. Memory is so cheap at the moment. Surely that's a a doable solution and that way even if there was no signal your card would still unlock the post and you would be able to 
get your charge. Um, you know, but I guess that hasn't occurred to them yet, or it hasn't occurred to the people that make the posts. I guess from the from the point of view of the people who make the posts, they're probably not that keen on reliable posts because then their engineers won't have a job. I don't know. Either way, there's a surprisingly large number of posts, though. So it is, you know, I mean, certainly we've done more or less a hundred miles a day up in Scotland because everything seems to be quite a long way away. Um, and the the car has just eaten up those miles, you know, without a second thought. Um, we've done, since we left Essex, we've now done 900 and almost 950 miles using just shy of 300 kilowatt hours of power. Oh, actually, no, that's not true. It's been a little bit more than 300 kilowatts of power. Uh, I, rather stupidly, I didn't um, set the uh, trip didn't reset the trip meter until I was already 47 miles into the journey. So the current trip meter is saying 900 miles for just shy of 300 kilowatt hours of power. Um, but you've got to add sort of 47 miles to that and whatever power it took to do that. Brilliant. Anyway, I don't, I don't think we're going to have any more trouble now from a charging point of view. I'm, you know, just going to use the three pin socket at the, uh, at the uh, guest house we're staying at and uh, that seems to be doing a pretty pretty good job of keeping the car charged um, and then we'll just head on straight down to Edinburgh tomorrow in the afternoon and that'll be our, um, our Scotland trip over but it's been good fun though and I'm thinking next year I might even do a little sort of impromptu weekend um, ski trip up here well we're on the way to Edinburgh having uh, left Canoosey, got a charge from the 13 amp uh, household sockets at the B&B again last night, very helpful um, place, lovely, lovely little B&B actually, I highly recommend that, Arden House, very nice, and yeah, so now it's, we're going to try and get all the way back down to just north of London, in one day, although it'll probably be mostly sort of you know day and a bit of night in reality. I'm not sort of not going to try and rush too much. Just go slowly and carefully. That's usually the best way. So we'll be at the Edinburgh Supercharger now in about 25 minutes. And then we're probably going to stop and have a bit of lunch there and get the car fully juiced up, back up to about 90%. Then we'll head on down towards the lead supercharger. Although I'm pretty sure we're going to stop for at least half an hour somewhere between Edinburgh and Leeds just to make it comfortable from a range perspective. And there's quite a lot of very strong wind at the moment, so that sort of probably isn't helping range. Although, you know, the car's still, still motoring along quite nicely. access to the supercharger. Can but hope. facilities that are open pretty much 24 hours a day which is always nice only slight downside is you have to press the button on the staff car park entrance in order to gain access and then press it again on the way out but that's not too much of a onerous task really let's wait for the Citroen Berlingo to get out of my way Hi, can I use the Tesla supercharger, please? Thank you. Hello. 
Cheers. And there you go. Simples. And you just turn to the left and drive along. And there you are, two nice little nose-in supercharger bays. Oh, and they're both empty. <coughs> Always handy. Gonna jump out and deal with Jasper. Right, we're at the Scotch Corner service station, plugged into the Ecotricity Point. Might just be able to see the uh, icon behind me there. Um, when we first turned up, there's actually a Nissan Leaf plugged into the other charge port, which is the uh, CCS stroke Chadamo version, and that wasn't working. Luckily, though. It was that sort of almost famous guy that seems to come here. I, I hear so many stories online and in the forums and stuff about the guy that comes to the Ecotricity charge points, but he only lives a mile down the road and he doesn't actually need to charge at all. So, <laughs> uh, I think he just likes the parking space. Either way, handily enough, he parked at the charger that wasn't working and um, either way, that wasn't the one with the uh, Type 2 socket, so... Uh, I plugged up to the one that does have the Type 2 socket, and that's now boosting us up from uh, the 16% that we arrived with. We're now up to 33%, and by the time we get to about 40, 45%, we'll have plenty of power to get down to the lead supercharger. Uh, and that's where we're going to uh, put our son to sleep in the back of the car. Hopefully he'll go to sleep. That will make the journey a little bit less hard work on my wife, who spent the last hour entertaining him. Um, yeah, driving an electric vehicle long distances, a Tesla long distances anyway, is certainly not difficult. Doing it with a small child, doing any long distance driving with a small child, that can be quite a challenge. Uh, yeah. So that's my update from Scotch Corner. It's not a bad service station. We decided to give the Washington service station a, a miss, which is the one about 45 miles uh, behind us, up the A1M, because it's just an absolutely awful service station. I don't recommend anyone stop there. And if they do stop there, make sure they've got like bulletproof glass or something, because it's just, ah! Anyway, don't like that one at all. It's not got very good. Uh, you know, shops and stuff and it's just it's just not I mean you know a service station is dodgy when you know the bridge across the motorway carriageways has a nice sort of sign saying warning in heavy rain this bridge leaks great anyway I'm going to uh, finish drinking my coffee and in 10-20 minutes hopefully we'll have enough power and we'll head back on back onto the road for the uh, hopefully the second to last leg of the journey hundred and eighteen kilowatts nice this is the lead supercharger doing its work for us Well, we got back yesterday at uh, 12, about midnight really in the end, which I didn't think was too bad. That was about 12 and a half hours total journey and we did 500 miles uh, at about um, 325, 330 watt hours per mile, which was actually pretty good given that there was a, quite a lot of wind and rain when we were up in Scotland and uh, the weather got a little bit sort of drier as we got further south and a little bit less windy which was good uh, and it was it was generally speaking a very very easy journey uh, all things considered no real dramas the the weather um sort of on the whole trip really was not was not brilliant from an efficiency point of view but one of the amazing things about the Model S in particular is it's very good at maintaining efficiency at speed on motorways. 
it's one of the things that Tesla have clearly got um, right with the car. And I put a lot of that down to the uh, low coefficient of drag that the Model S has. Um, I think it's 0.24, which is basically um, class leading. Um, and and that efficiency really pays dividends as you start to go faster and obviously uh, the air resistance builds on the car so <clears throat> yeah all in all very very easy very enjoyable trip did 1500 miles in total because I, I thought it'd be less than that I thought it'd be a few hundred miles less but we wound up doing quite a lot of driving in the highlands um, and more or less everything we wanted to see seemed to be quite a way off. Um, so, but that's fine, you know, it's actually, it's a, it's a fantastic way to drive around somewhere beautiful like the Highlands of Scotland in an electric car, it's sort of silently swooping around the corners and being able to enjoy the, the scenery. Um, <laughs> I won't say the weather so much, although it was nice when it snowed, I, I enjoyed that, that's pretty, I like snow. <coughs> And um, <clears throat> yeah, we used just shy uh, 495 kilowatt hours of power in total, which uh, was actually pretty good efficiency around 330 watt hours per mile. Um, again, which given the weather, I'm very happy with that level of efficiency. I didn't make a particular effort to drive carefully, but I do generally speaking drive quite carefully and slowly anyway just because I'm I think it's a hang up from my Nissan Leaf days where you either drove carefully and slowly and or you didn't get from A to B at all uh, that's sort of <laughs> certainly something that you don't have to worry about so much in the um, Tesla uh, we pulled into uh, uh, Leeds in the end with about Oh, I can't remember exactly what it was, I think it was about 15% or something in the battery and had a 118 kilowatt charge rate from that, which is always nice. It doesn't half fill the battery up quickly and we back up at 90% in about 45 minutes, which, um, you know, is brilliant because, you know, put the little one to bed and in the back of the car in his car seat and he slept uh, for the rest of the way the next sort of four four and a half hours um all the way from actually no it wasn't four and a half hours it was more like f four hours i think between leeds and uh, and home and we got back with about um i think it was about nine percent left in the battery in the end we did stop very briefly between leeds and home uh, not because the car needed us to stop but because i needed a toilet break and desperately some coffee uh, keep the so it was it was a human recharging stop as opposed to a car recharging stop although I did still plug into the ecotricity point for 10 minutes because you know why not it just slightly reduces the wear on the battery not having it go it would have gone down all the way to four percent um, the energy app is brilliant I would say that's something that Tesla have really got sorted in this car it's extremely good at predicting what level of power you're gonna have when you get somewhere and it gives you the confidence to drive to a lower state of charge than you would if you were just doing it based on your own mental arithmetic. So I, I highly recommend that other um, electric car manufacturers sort of think about implementing something similar in their cars, especially the sort of ones with a lower range, because then it, as I said, it gives you the confidence to sort of drive, you know, and use more of the battery's charge without having to get too technical in terms of you know working out you know how many miles am i using versus how many miles did i start with and you know so am i overachieving or underachieving on that range as i drive down the road and if i then factor that into the rest of the journey am i going to make it or do i have to stop and charge and you know these are the kind of things that i sort of did all the time while i was driving my nissan and um i it's quite a lot of mental, you know, work because you, you're constantly reassessing it and going, okay, so we got stuck in traffic. What effect did that have? Am I still all right? Do I have to come up with a, a plan B on the fly or, or whatever? <coughs> so that's um. No, I picked up a bit of a cough in, 
in Scotland. Um, I probably didn't, I probably took it to Scotland anyway, actually, but either way, I don't think the, the cold weather is much colder up there than it was uh, down down around London. Um, I'd say it was almost certainly a good eight degrees difference in, in temperature terms. It's quite a lot, really. And the, the low temperature didn't make that much difference to the car, I've got to say, which was good. Nice to drive around with the heating on, something else that I didn't do a lot of in the Nissan Leaf in winter. <clears throat> yeah, all in all, good journey, nice and easy. Highly recommend road trips in the in the Tesla, and I'm hopefully going to do another one uh, this summer. Hoping to go to Italy then. Should be good fun. Probably going to go via Holland and Germany. Keeps us away from the toll roads in France and also uh, both of my cousins actually live in uh, near Frankfurt so nice places to stop and, and see them for a night or two and uh, and then we get to drive through the Alps as well Although I suppose we probably go through the Alps whichever way we go don't we more or less maybe not if we go around from the south of France past Monaco but I think I think through through the Alps it's going to be more fun, prettier. The energy apple have to do its work then, taking into account the um, elevation changes. But I'm sure it'll. I'm sure it'll cope admirably. The only problem we've got with going to Italy is going to be the um, plugs in in Italy are a bit non-standard, shall we say? And I do sort of, I have concerns about destination charging in Italy. I think we're probably going to have to just use superchargers like petrol pumps, which will limit us in terms of where we can go. But say the V. We don't go to Italy very often, and I'm sure it'll be a, a fun trip. Everyone enjoyed going to Scotland, that's for sure. So it, to be honest, it was more of a more of a test of can we manage taking a small child on a long road trip than it was a test of will the car do it. Certainly, in hindsight, it looked that way because it was much more of a planning process around what Jasper will or won't put up with as a as a passenger in the car, rather than what the car will do, which. We didn't actually really get anywhere near the limits of what the car will do at all. Anyway, um, please uh, check out my blog, um, which I'm going to start doing, because I'm going to be putting up articles about my sort of thoughts on electric vehicles and what's going on in the uh, electric vehicle industry. That's going to be a little sort of pet project of mine, and I'll try and... Um, put up articles and opinion pieces with some regularity on that site and uh, I'll put a link to that in the description to this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it to be interesting and informative.